Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Zygo webinar. Um, today, we're going to be going over basic scripting in MX with Python. Um, I'll be presenting. My name is Scott Kotmer. I'm an associate applications engineer based out of our Santa Clara office. Uh, also on the webinar are Rich Poltar and Dan Rusano, who are two applications engineers based out of uh, our Connecticut facility, who will be taking questions. So to start, just for some housekeeping, on the, you should see this uh, show and hide control panel option on the side of your screen if you're on a computer version of this. And below it, you'll see two drop, drop down windows for handouts and questions. The handouts are just some resources um, that'll go over what we go over today. And questions you can submit live and we'll answer either on the webinar or as a text response. You can also adjust the size of the webcam and the screen and show and hide webcam. Uh, on webcam, it's just gonna be my face. So if you don't wanna see that and just wanna focus on the content, feel free to hide that. So to overview what we're gonna be talking about, first, we're gonna go into a basic scripting overview, briefly talk about general Python syntax, and then mainly go into the MX specific commands you can run using scripting. Uh, the next section will write and run scripts in MX, show different ways to trigger script runs in the software, as well as uh, go over the script editor. And then to conclude, we're going to build a scripting application from scratch, uh, just to show the process of that. So why should I use scripting? Um, first off, automated procedures help reduce operator error. And you may be thinking, well, MX already has a lot of different ways to automate measurements. There's auto sequence for doing repetitions, patterns for navigating to different sites and taking measurements, and recipes for going through a sequence of actions. Um, however, scripting allows for a higher degree of control on any sort of automated task you want to do. So just as a comparison, um, built in MX, with recipes, you can run a sequence of actions. You can also do that in scripting. Um, with patterns, you can automatically drive to different locations. You can also automatically drive to different locations uh, via scripting. Um, but for things that require a bit more control, like advanced file or folder management, there is a way built in to automatically generate file names and save to specific directories. But say you want to create a whole folder structure that automatically populates based on attributes of the data you're measuring, then you need scripting. Also, for any sort of logic-driven action, um, you would need scripting to use if-then statements to determine what to do. Um, also, in terms of custom data analysis, if you want to write uh, your own custom-specific uh, niche data analysis that's not available within MX, you can write that in scripting. Um, additionally, Automating repetitive tasks just saves time. Uh, if you have a lot of data files and you want to batch process through and save specific images, you can save a whole lot of time with scripting. Um, and just to note, the applications group works to build scripting solutions. And so we're here to support you if you have any problem that you think scripting could solve. So, and also, so if you're familiar with Zygo, you may have used Metro Pro in the past instead of MX, and Metro Pro had a scripting language called MetroScript. Um, some advantages that MX has because it uses Python is um, that Python is a common programming language. So there's tons of online support available for the basic syntax. Um, also, MX has a script editor built into the software that provides tool tips to make coding a lot easier. Um, in, our, in, our live, in our live demonstration later, you'll see the power of that. Also, this uh, tool tips will show up in other external editors as well. So now we're gonna go into some basic Python syntax just to get our feet wet. Um, so the most basic unit of a Python code is variables. You assign a variable with an equal sign, so you have the label for the variable, equal sign, then the value. 
There are several types of variables. Some basic ones here are integers, which are, like our example, just whole numbers. Strings, which are text values. You can make uh, any value a text value by putting quotation marks around it. That's a necessary uh, attribute of the string variable. Floats, which are numbers with decimals. And finally, we have bools or booleans, which are true or false values. Now, if you've used other coding languages, you may have had to call out a variable's type before you use it, like in C um, or something like that. However, in Python, it automatically determines the variable type based on whatever you set it equal to, so you don't have to worry about that. Moving on to collections, I'll go over two specific ones here, um, list and tuples. So lists are collections of variables which are ordered and changeable. So you define a list by putting a square brackets around a list of values or variables separated by commas. Now, what I mean by changeable is if later on in the script I want to add a value or take out a value, I would be able to do that with a list. However, if you don't want that to be an option for you later in the script, you could use a tuple. Tuples are defined instead of square brackets, we use parentheses to uh, contain all the variables. And an important note is that to access one of these variables stored in a collection, uh, you can reference it with an index number. Um, so the syntax for that would be the name of the collection and then square brackets index number. And it's important to note that the index numbers in Python start at zero. So A is zero, B is one, C is two, D is three. Um, so you can see our example script right here to print out whatever value we had stored at that location. So now we're gonna go over the specific MX commands. So a very basic one right here would be instrument.measure weight equals true. So this would trigger a measurement. So to go into the actual syntax of what's happening here, uh, first you have your library, and that would be instrument. Libraries are collections of similar commands. And then dot, and then the command that's within that library. And the command is just the, an action for the script to perform. And then within these parentheses, you can have an argument, which are input the command uses to modify the command's behavior. So in this case, the weight variable set equal to true waits for the instrument to finish a measurement before uh, continuing on with the rest of the script. Some examples of these libraries, um, these all automatically install when you install MX on to a PC. So there's the MX library, which allows for basic high-level MX functionality. Instrument library, which we used before, which contains all the commands that control an instrument. Um, there's a motion library, which controls the movement of an instrument stages, a UI library that allows for communication with the MX GUI, and a units library, which contains all MX supported units of measurement. There's also a lot more libraries that install with Zygo. There's mass, fiducials, pattern, recipes, system commands, and more. Um, the attached handout uh, titled I believe it's MX scripting, contains uh, a lot of documentation on all these different libraries, if you're interested. Moving on to saving and loading data. So it's as simple as using MX library dot save data, and then the file name. Uh, an important thing to note is this file name uh, should be the actual directory as well. So it'll be a full file name uh, followed by dot .datx or something like that. So a more advanced version of this would be to use the autosave data tool built in the MX to automatically generate a file name as well as uh, define what folder to save to. So you can call, uh, you can trigger this to autosave data by typing mx.autosave data and then in parentheses it has an argument called update sequence which if set to true tells MX to increment this sequential within the auto generate file name if you have a sequential there. 
Moving on to some basic motion commands, you can move the X, Y, Z stages of a profiler. You can move them all at once with dot move X, Y, Z. You can also control the roll and pitch separately or again combined. Um, to go over the arguments within here, uh, the first argument would be the position you wish to move to, the unit, and then like with the measure command, a weight argument to say to wait for the uh, instrument to get to the position before continuing the script. To go into some detail on the unit argument here, the, this comes from the unit library I mentioned before that's uh, built into the MX Python installation. So units are, uh, you can def uh, define a unit by typing units dot and then the unit. There's a ton of units uh, that MX understands. This is where the tooltips again become super powerful because you can just type units dot and then you get a full list of all the units available to you. Next up, we're going to talk about setting and getting controls and results. So by typing mx dot set control or result, you can change the number string or bool of uh, results or controls. So for controls, that would be something like scan length or number of averages. You can control that. Um, with results, uh, you can only set custom results. So you can't override like your PV or RMS. But if you have a custom result set up, you can set that via scripting. You can also get the values stored at the controller results. So there you'd be able to pull the PV value, RMS value or pull the number of averages, stuff like that, with these commands. Uh, you'll note then in, in terms of arguments, um, here we have a variable called a path. So paths are how MX knows what you're looking for when you say what control number uh, you want to set or get. To get a path to an element, um, you right-click within MX, you'll see a variety of these dropdowns. And if it has something like identify or scripting, then identify, identify a plot, stuff like that. When you click that, it'll open a window to allow you to copy the path to the clipboard. And then you can go ahead and paste that into your script. We'll go over how to do that in our custom application setup. And you can also get attributes. You can't set an attribute because it's specific to the data file, um, but similar syntax to controls and results, just changing this word to attribute. Now to save pictures and process data from plots. Here we have a little bit, we have a multi-line script. Um, first, you have to define a control variable. So this isn't a simple variable like an integer uh, float or something like that. This is actually a variable that represents a control with an MX. So we set that equal to UI dot get the control and then the path to the control. Now that we have that variable, we can run commands on it, like to save image or save data. Again, these are the file paths, um, not just a file name. And for images, you can save as a JPEG, uh, bitmap, PNG, a TIFF. For save data, you can save it in any uh, file format available to you within MX to file save data as. Also, um, you can save it to any file format available within file export data, so STLs, Code 5 files, stuff like that. The And that's what the optional parameters argument here is for, is for uh, Code 5 settings and things like that. Um, if you want more information on that, feel free to reach out to us. So now that we've gone very quickly through just some of the basic scripting capability within MX, I'd like to open the floor to any questions. Yeah, we had a few questions come in here. Uh, the first is, can I recreate Metro Pro scripts in Python? So there is no um, magic button that can automatically convert a Metro script uh, program into Python, but any functionality that Metro script had, you can recreate with Python. Just go in line by line and replicating that functionality, uh, rewriting it basically in Python. 
Um, and we can also, as the applications group, help out with that process. Okay. And then also, could you show how to identify controls and results? Sure. So if we go over to MX here, um, we'll go down to averages. If I right click, you'll see the option to identify or copy path. I'll go into the identify just um, to show that window I was talking about. Um, here it shows you the path and just by clicking copy path, now that path is stored on my clipboard and I can copy and paste it into uh, wherever I'd like. Okay, so that's it for now. We'll continue. Sweet. Now I'm going to go over writing and running scripts with NMX. So moving back over to MX. First off, you'll note on the side here, I'm just in the base micro app. There are these two tabs called script editor and script output. If you don't see these, if you go up to view and then script editor, script output, you can make them show up over there. So we'll start off with the script editor. This is where you can write uh, whatever script you want. You'll note here that it already has imported a lot of those libraries I'd mentioned before. You can also write scripts in an external editor, but note that these imports of the libraries, uh, this uh, part of the script won't be included if you start a new Python script in an external editor. So I would suggest just copy and paste in this on top of any code you write, if external. So to write just a basic script, I'm gonna go print statement and then hello world. So this will print the string hello world to the output. You'll see that there's this yellow highlight on the side here. That means that we have a unsaved uh, change to a script. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save or control S and I'm gonna save this as test.py. Save and I'm gonna replace that. So note that if you try to run without saving, uh, it'll just prompt you to save, so it's pretty robust in that regard. Um, now we can go ahead and run or push F5. And you'll see down here it told us that our script run succeeded. And if we go over to output, you'll see we have printed hello world to the output here. I'm going to go ahead and pin that over here so we can see that moving on to some other ways to run scripts. So we can also go into auto sequence. that would open up. Hmm. Oh, I see where it is. Opened up on my other monitor there, but here we go. So now if we change the operation from measure to run script, uh, it allows us to grab whatever script we want. So click these three dots, we'll get that test.py. And say we want to run that five times. If I click Start Sequence, you'll see over here on the output, it runs the script five times. So that's another way to automatically run a script. Um, go back into MX here, we'll clear. If we go into Automation, we can also run a script at every pattern site. So again, like in auto sequence, if we change this action from measure to run script and then select the script path to whatever script we wanna run. Now, if we go to different sites, it will run that script uh, at each site. And now let's say you want to run a script by manually triggering something. Uh, manually pushing a button or something, but you don't want your operator to have to go in here and click run script every time you want to run a script. If we right click in this dark gray area and grab the scripting toolbar, um, we'll go ahead and just add remove buttons, customize, commands, and scripting. And I'm gonna select add script button. 
when I click that, it gives us this whole new button that says run script right now. And if we click the down caret and go to options, again, like an auto sequence and pattern, we choose what script we want to run. Um, you'll see this blank for arguments. Uh, this allows you to uh, pass values into your script. This is a bit more advanced feature though, so we'll ignore that at the moment. But we'll change the caption to say, let's say, say hello. And now for the tooltip, which is just the text that appears when you hover over the button, we'll say says hello. And down here we can select the icon. So I like this guy. Hit OK, updates the changes. And now when we click say hello, when we check our script output, you'll see that it says hello. So now I'd like to open the floor to any questions about writing and running scripts with an MX. Yes, so you showed a couple of ways to run scripts there, but are there any other ways? Um, some ways besides the one I showed would be if you go to tools and then options, say you want to uh, run a script on MX startup or run a script on application load here, again, with the, the three dots and the to define what script you want to run, you would be able to run scripts that way. Um, additionally, there is a library that installs called Connection Manager, which lets you run scripts from external editors. And then if a, an instance of MX is open on the PC you run at, it'll communicate with that and uh, you can run the script external from MX. And one other question here. Do you need to save your scripts in any specific location? Nope. So that's another good feature. Um, I believe in Metro Pro you had to save to like a specific working directory. Um, with MX you can save the script wherever you'd like. Cool. So now we're going to go into building a custom scripting application from scratch. So our premise for this application is the operator needs to measure four separate positions on a part using a profiler. And each of these positions require drastically different measurement settings. Additionally, um, each of the positions must be found visually. And we can't use a pattern, it varies part to part. So um, it actually requires the operator to drive there. So here we can see kind of a mock-up of the part as well as some reference images for uh, the positions that need to be measured. Based on this premise, we can derive a few requirements. So first, the application should allow the operator to easily switch between different measurement settings. We don't want them to have to go through and click through a bunch of stuff. We want it to minimize the number of clicks and walk them through it just to make it as easy as possible. Um, additionally, since they all must be found visually, the application should display a reference image for the desired position so the operator has a quick reference to identify uh, where they want to drive to. So let's go ahead and we're gonna hop back into MX. I'm going to close this guy for now just so we can start from a clean slate here. So we'll go ahead and load the micro app. Um, so another thing to notice I have on my desktop here, I have a folder with all of those images and settings files that correlate with the images. And all of these are named the same thing uh, in terms of, I mean, the extensions are different, but the base file name is the same. And I'll go into why I did that as I script here. So we'll go ahead and open the script editor. You'll see it still has open our, and I'm gonna actually pin that. Um, it still has our test script, so we'll go ahead and close that. Um, I'll also pin the script output window here, um, just so we can see what our script outputs. So to start, I'm going to create a list called settings list. 
and set that equal to a list of the names of the position. So we have position one, position two, position three. Um, another thing to note about scripting is, uh, especially uh, in Python, uh, we can go multi-line. It doesn't care about uh, spacing like this. So as long as we have a comma after each of these variables, I can put this list onto multiple lines. This helps just for readability, essentially. And so I'm going to go ahead and click Save, and we'll call this Custom App. And so now you can see we got green right there. So now I want to prompt the user to select from this list. So I'm going to create a variable called setting equals UI dot show. And you'll see here we have our tooltips. And I want to show a drop down dialog, which already shows up right here. So I can just arrow key down and hit tab, and I already have the full command. So this is the, the power of those actual uh, tooltips. So it also prompts us on what arguments we need. So first we need the text. So I'm going to say select the settings to load. And next, the list of values. So we can go ahead and hit settings list. And then we want to grab what mode to open this dialog window in. So ui.dialogmode. And we want this to be just a, a message with OK cancel. And I can go ahead and save. A uh, good practice for actually writing a script from scratch is to always be checking if your script is working and what it's outputting. So I'm going to go ahead and output settings right here. Hit save. And I'll hit run. And it prompts us to which setting to load. I'll go position two, hit OK. And we see we have an error right here. So although it says script run succeeded down here, that means that the script has essentially completed running. But now we want to go into what this error is causing. So there's a lot of stuff on the top here that can be a bit confusing. So if you focus on the bottom part here, it'll show on line 19, we have a name error. The name settings is not defined. So I see I mistyped the variable name. Um, it should just be setting. So that's some power in uh, always running the scripts as you go. So now that I have that, I'm going to hit run. And we'll go position three and hit OK. And you'll see our output said two. So you may be wondering why didn't it output the actual name that I wanted there. Um, the UI show drop down dialog. The output is the list ID of the element the user selected within that list. So I actually need to type in settings list. And then in square brackets, we put that ID. Now I'm going to clear the output there, hit run, and I'm going to go position four, hit OK. Now we can see we're referencing the correct spot in the list. So now we're sure that our script is working. I'm going to go ahead and define the working directory of that folder where all of our uh, images and settings files are located. So I'm going to grab that directory. And within quotations, I'll paste that. Also, at the beginning, you need to type a R. This lets Python know that this is a path and not just a, a string. Now I want to build the file name for the setting. You can see that all of these are the names for those files, but it doesn't have the extension on there. So I'm going to define a variable called settings file name and set that equal to, like in our print statement, we had settings list, setting, and plus sign, and in quotation marks, dot set x. So to concatenate strings together in Python, you can just use a plus statement between two strings, and it will combine them together. So if I go ahead and say print settings file name, and hit run, We'll go position one this time. You'll see in our output, we have output position one set X. 
Cool. Now that we have our working directory and the settings file name we want to use, I'm going to go ahead and load those settings within MX. So MX library dot load, we'll see settings. And now it needs the file name for the settings to load. And remember, this is actually the path, uh, the file path to the settings file. So I'm going to import an additional library called OS. This OS library allows us to manipulate paths more effectively than just base Python allows. Um, note that this OS library is a standard library within Python. You just have to call it out up here. So I'm going to do os.path.join and we'll join together the working directory and the settings file name. And we'll put another parenthesis on there and save everything. Now, if we go ahead and run this, I'm going to load, let's say, position three settings, hit OK. And you'll see over here, we changed a, a lot of the settings from what it was. So, looks like it's working. Now, we want to have that image grid that the operator can reference to navigate to a different spot. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little smaller. And if we go up to grid and then add image grid, I'm going to put it on the right over here. We need to grab the path for this image grid so we can populate it with whatever image we want. So if I right click, hit identify, we'll see our path, copy that, hit OK. Now I'm going to define a variable called image grid path and we'll set that within parentheses, copy paste that path. Um, you can always import this the same line you run the command on. I like to keep them separate just for the sake of going back and it's a bit more readable. So now I want to set a variable equal to that image grid. So I'm going to set image grid equal to ui.get control, just like the plot we did in the presentation and tell it to grab the image grid found at that path. Great. So now we need to build the image file name that we want to load, just like the settings file name up there. So we will do image file name equals settings list. That's setting, but instead of the dot set x, we'll be doing the .png. And we can go ahead and check to make sure that image file name is correct. Hit run. We'll load position two. We'll see the settings change and position two.png. So we're building it correctly. So now I want to set that image grid to the image. So ui.setImageGrid, and then in parentheses we have that image grid control variable. And then we need the path to the image, so like with settings, os.path.join, and in parentheses we want the working directory followed by the image file name. Go ahead and save that. So now let's go ahead and see if this works. So hit run. We'll go position four, hit OK. We'll see our settings change and we have the position four image displayed in that image grid. So everything is functioning correctly. Now, like I said before in our presentation, we don't want the operator to have to go in and click this tiny run script button every time they want to uh, use the script, so I'm going to minimize these guys out. We'll make this bigger just for the sake of it. And I'm going to add the script button like I showed in uh, the previous part of the presentation. Hit add. Now I change this to point to the script that we just wrote, custom app.py. Open that and we'll say move position positions as the caption and the tooltip will say loads the settings and 
image of a position. And we'll select whatever image we want. I like this guy right here. So now whenever we click this button, it'll give us that dialog. We can select what position we want to move to, hit OK. It'll change the settings and load the proper image. So that's how you build a custom application using scripting. So now we'll go back to the presentation. Um, before we open up questions for this, I'd like to go over just some kind of closing thoughts for the presentation. So in MX 8.0, the tabs have been renamed. Previously, they were named Calibrate, Measure, Analyze, Automate. Now they're named Calibration, Measurement, Analysis, Automation. So any previous scripts you had where uh, the paths started with the tab, so Measure, Measurement, you'll need to go back into that script and change uh, measure to measurement, analyze to analysis, so on and so forth. It's not a backwards compatible change, so you will have to manually go in and change those. Um, if you want to go further with scripting, um, this has just been a very uh, basic overview. There's countless of external libraries that you can use for further data analysis, file formatting, and graphing. There's something called the Python scientific stack, which includes NumPy, Matplotlib, SciPy. All these effectively let you replicate functionality uh, found in stuff like MATLAB. Um, we don't provide technical support for these libraries, but there is tons of documentation online. If you're interested uh, in using these, we have a PDF that shows you how to set up uh, your configuration to allow for these external libraries to be installed. Additionally, if you have like third-party fixturing that can be controlled with Python, you can control that fixturing in tandem with NMX. Um, so say you wanna trigger measurement in MX and then move a third-party fixture, you can do that within Python. Even if it uses a different uh, scripting language, if it can still read text files, you can output text files with Python. So output the text file and then the uh, third-party language would understand that. Uh, for stuff like remote access, we provide a .NET compatible DLL. So feel free to reach out to us if you want any information on setting that up. The gist of it is that there's pretty much limitless computational possibilities thanks to using Python. Uh, so feel free to explore it. And if you have any questions, please contact us. Um, so now I'd like to open the floor to any final questions. Also, here is uh, where to contact us if you have any need more information. Yes, yeah, so we got a question about <clears throat> handling multiple scripts. So say you have two or three scripts, could you show how to add multiple script buttons to run those? Sure, so I'm gonna go back into MX. Um, we'll probably have to mess with the toolbar a little bit here just so we can view. Um, so I'm going to take off some buttons that we're not using right now. So right now we already have our uh, loading positions button, but if I hit that add script button again, it creates a whole new button. If I go options, script, and we'll use our test Python script we had before. Um, I'll go ahead and open that, change the caption to hello, and hit OK. So now if I hit hello, it's not going to run our load settings and image script but it will run our hello world script, as you can see right there. But I can still, of course, run um, the other script as well. So essentially, you just need to make sure that these script paths up here point to the script you want that button to reference. Perfect. Uh, looks like the last question here. Uh, do you have any personal favorite online Python resources? Yeah, so for general Python stuff, um, like error troubleshooting, when you see like name error and stuff like that, I always start at Google. If you copy and paste the, the name of that error into Google, more likely than not, someone has run into that problem before. So they'll, the first result often uh, gives you a good explanation of what's going on. Uh, there's also a website called Tutorials Point that gives you a really good basic overview. Um, that's a bit more high level than, say, reading through all the docs um, found at python.org. Um, also, for uh, specific troubleshooting, 
Um, if you're looking for a specific website, when you copy and paste that error into Google, Stack Overflow has a really good uh, community for that kind of troubleshooting.